You see anything? Nope, still don't have the icon. Sorry, so I don't know what happened. Please. I will, um, hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. If people can hear, we're trying to work out the bugs, folks. Sorry. Uh, I'll go see if anybody can hear you. And Gene, can you type into the chat and okay. let them know that we're just solving yep. some issues? We need a chat stick. Yeah, we do. To fix up the problem. <laughs> no, but I mean, I think right. going back to what you said, for me, and I'm sure many, the, 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 the attitude toward Native America popularly was established in pop culture, which is like an atrocity and a half. You know, it was because, yeah. you know, the simplistic, you always need the bad guy. You always need the enemy at the gate to tell drama. Hollywood needed that, right? You needed the good yep. guys and the bad guys. Who's the good guys? Well, the white settlers and the white, you know, founding fathers and the white invaders. You know, who's the bad guys? Well, those who were invaded, those who we have to create them to be. And then you tell that the first film that was made in Hollywood that portrayed Native America as human beings was Broken Arrow in 1950 with Jimmy Stewart. And Jeff Chandler and Deborah Padgett played Native Americans, but there was... Jay Silver Heroes was in the film, a, a real Native American. But nonetheless, the point is, they were portrayed as humans. It was the first time. And it, it was hoped that possibly this would start a whole new way. And some of it, I'm aware of anyway, that it never happened, probably until Little yeah. Big Man, you know? And then, of course, Dances yeah. with Wolves, which became iconic in terms of that statement. Yeah. And I think, you know, so that there's a big responsibility there in creating this image, this false image. You know, this fake historical view, you know. And art has a responsibility, you know, especially in cool circumstances to speak the truth. It does. To speak the truth to power. Yes. Just the facts, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> Just give me the facts. <laughs> you know, tr facts. truth becomes like arguable. Well, that's your truth. No, that's your truth. But facts. Here's the facts. Yeah. There yeah. is an objectable objectable i don't think that's the right word i'm looking for right objective there's an objective yeah. truth yes you know a third party perspective that you know that you can erase all intention from everything and say what was the motivations and all that you can take all of that out of it and just say this is what happened yeah these people were here doing this, this thing these people came did this thing and right. did this thing can you see so, them please uh, no. Well, in any event, all right. So, I mean, there are other books, too, that after you finish this one, I, I can recommend also which, that are not particularly uh, lightweight reading, but they're intriguing. Uh, they're, they should be read. They should be, you know. In any the, uh, I'm going to look at my daughter recommended a website to me. Uh, that, I, that I'm going, I have it pulled up, but I, I haven't read the whole thing. It's called The Children of Birmingham, 1963. Uh -huh. And it's all the kids that were in Birmingham, Alabama, after the bombing of Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. And wow. then recounting mm -hmm. their stories. And it's, you know, it's uh, white people, black people, both, you know, right. recounting what what happened so i had a book recommended to to us gene and i did from a friend cast you know the cast system brand new book uh, mm -hmm. i just got that i just started to read that in any event so we're talking about this now <laughs> which may have nothing to do with what we just said yeah yeah i don't even know if the people can hear us yet she said they were saying they can't hear but i don't know i hope so i hope so or we're just I mean, I always like just talking to you anyway. I like talking to you too, man. But we're doing it over camera, so hopefully the people that are watching are, are hearing. Um, so, but this this will be eventually heard by people. That's the hope. <laughs> that's the, the hope that they'll have to, to re-watch. Um, hmm. Ask her if they've said that they can hear yet. Gene, 
Yeah. Keith wants to know if uh, they can hear yet. No. They can't hear us. Sharon, a friend, said she can hear us both. Okay, great. All right. So well, I just, I can't participate in the comments today. Gene's uh, monitoring questions. On another, okay. over there. This is like. Okay. okay. It's going to be <laughs> slight, slightly different. Okay. So tell us about what you got, man. All right. It, part, part of my series of my, uh, my kid stuff, so supposedly kid stuff, you know, uh, in my old toys and everything. Here is. The Space Outlaw pistol, which is uh, early 50s. It's by uh, uh, the Lesney uh, Company. They're British based, and they, hmm. they were they were the ones that are really known for the matchbox cars. And oh, okay. They, and they also made, you know, ray guns. Space Outlaw. It's a cap gun. And I've had this for a number of years, and it's really pretty wild looking it's pretty fancy it's kind of a art nouveau quality about it you know it and, does yeah. yeah so i you know I, I got into the skeleton that gene and i own gene we we bought this years ago to as a reference to uh, paint some uh, posters and images and it's a real skeleton from the Car carolina biological society and we've had it for years and i'm i you know i painted the the last painting with the with the uh uh Atomic disintegrator with the, and I decided not to do the skull and everything. So he'll be holding this, and I've started to paint this already. So, which we're shooting the skull skeleton up in Gene's office. That's where he stands, and I'm shooting it with the I, my first initial concepts were always like falling back on what I already do, a back light blue light edge lighting it in a low frontal warm light and, and gene was holding on because we had to pose the guy and everything and i'm shooting from the front she was from the back she said come around this side and take a look at it that's where all the blue light now was from the front and i said whoa that big beautiful blue light color and i said that's it so we then shot it that way you know as opposed an opposite lighting setup from which i had planned and so we're doing this, you know, it's, I, but I love the warm and the cool thing that that contrast really, you know, yeah. knocks me out in it. I think it's kind of like fits this stuff, you know, so this I yeah, just you, started this yesterday. Tinkered in, with, tinkered in with the complimentary colors and yeah, uh, so that whole. Yeah, and here's what I'm thinking of now once I started to get into it, which I think would be kind of neat is is uh where the hell's the reference i got all kinds of reference here is a wet eyeball you know <laughs> do a nice eye here oh so you're gonna actually put an eye into the socket yeah i think i think that would be kind of cool wouldn't it it just gives it a whole other element there it does just sort of a mars attacks look <laughs> it does um you know, so, you know, it's fun. It's just, so the whole thing, you know, obviously with these things is retrospective to my childhood and toys yep. and just having fun, just playing, you know, and it's like, well, as you know, working with Gene, where yep. these are being painted with the specific thought that there'll be NFTs. Yep. And and we'll get into the NFT aspect in, in just a moment, but I wanted to uh, just talk about this a little bit longer. If you don't, if you don't mind. <clears throat> no, let's go. I think it's it's seeing this whole series from the beginning. Um, it, it's a very interesting watching the evolution of the paintings themselves of of the series. Uh, Going from the very first one that was the statue, or was that little chalk statue, right? Uncle the Sam thing. with the the you little know. sailor girl and sailor boy, yeah. Yeah, that was painted very much in a you know that photorealistic style, and it really presented the object as it was in that moment, in that scenario. Yes. Right, and then 
you know, when then when you kicked in with the second painting, which your sound disappeared and you froze. So Keith is talking about the second painting in the series of kid stuff was a one of my ventriloquist puppet dolls for or toys, as it were. That was from the 19, late 1930s. And I painted him first. We call it, said the spider to the fly. And again, it, it had this cool light and warm light scenario, which for me brings out the form and the contrasts of color and light as it exists in nature. Kind of cranked up a bit from, the, from reality. Well, reality light can be any color in reality that's that's kind of a misstatement the in that 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 was the the first one then the second one and then i painted uh i think three more puppets after that i continued on to explain the the series yeah i'm back I'm yeah back. I, I carried on yeah i carried on sorry. yeah disappearance yeah sorry about that. Uh, i have well i have um my do not disturb on my phone. Uh, however, that was the the instant alert system from my kid's school. So it comes through as an emergency, even though it's not an emergency. It just like wants to remind me of a PTA meeting. I see. <laughs> oh, reality. So totally the it, yeah, it, it, it booted me out. And um, so I, I apologize for getting my oh, PTA so notice. Yeah, yeah, in the middle is, of the live stream. But uh, so w where I left off, sorry if I'm, can I jump back and? Yeah, I, I explain, I, I carried on. I talked about the, the first puppet head, that it was the second painting and how I triggered yeah. that off. And then I started to do the next two or three puppet uh, dolls and, and I kind of like stopped there. Yeah. And, but then, so what I was going to say is watching the evolution into these, uh, into these last, you that you've gone from painting them uh, exactly as they are in that scenario. I mean, you're setting them up with the lighting or you happen to catch the light coming in the window on it, but now you, you are, you're manipulating now the scenario. Right. Yes. Uh, with, you know, the, where the, You've cut out again. I guess there's another emergency call about the PTA coming through. There must be a, a really heavy duty meeting coming up. But yes, manipulating as Keith started to say, the lighting as opposed to just walking in and naturally coming through the windows and, and the uh, whatever. And so that I, now I set up lights. I choose the lighting that I want. And with this one in particular, like we started to talk about, and with the blue light, which I have colored different colored lights that I use to light things up. Generally speaking, I don't use colored lights because I invent the color myself as I'm painting. I mean, uh, it might as well be black and white photographs for the most part. But with these, when I do like illustrations for Marvel or anybody else, the color is all going to be invented by, by, by me, given the subject matter. But with these uh, particular images and uh, sub this subject matter, um, I'm pretty much you know, relying on the color of the object as it, the true color of the object as it's affected by the, by the colored lights, because I'm trying to get a really a, kind of an accurate, I guess what you would call accurate portrait of the reality of either in this particular case, the, the skeleton and also the, the space gun. So that's but, but more, more PTA information. <laughs> yes, this one was to tell me about Governor Murphy's uh, order on mask use on school grounds. Ah, but no they shot in called, the beer. No, no shot no, in the beer announcement. Though. No shot in the beer announcement. The Honeywell alert came through four times. That's why it kept allowing it to come through. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Reality. I'm sure everybody knows for this. Yep, so I, 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 I was talking about just with you, I carried on what you were pointing out, that the originals were more or less walking in and seeing the, net, the light as it existed, and then, oh, being triggered by that, and now using the light to uh, consciously 
to light it the way I want to light it. But still, I want the, I'm trying to maintain the actual, and I haven't got there yet, the actual light that I may be consciously manipulating and setting up myself. I still am paying attention to the fact that I'm trying to portray the object being lit accurately. Whereas yeah. contrasting that to general illustration that I do, like for Marvel or whatever, I don't really rely on any color photos that I, there I'm inventing the color or the colors are already invented, say on the characters. And now I'm inventing the color of the light, but I can use black and white to do that, you know, yeah. because I'm not concerned about necessarily portraying the whole scene accurately, like it was a real place, but it's more coming out of my imagination and yeah. meeting reality. This I'm trying to paint what's there. Yep. You're you painting know? what's there and um, it you it again, you know, when I say the the manipulation, you're just you're telling the story now in a in a in a in a evolved way, just in a new different way than right. like for instance, you're adding an eyeball to Ichabod. Yeah, um, I may, I may even, I know that as we talk, I may have some, some fluid licking down. I don't know yet. You know, depends. It just hits you. You know, you know, like how mm -hmm. that you want to go with that. Some of the flesh from the inside, as though it's still, you know, attached somehow. You know, it's yeah. just fun. It's, yeah. it's being crazy and fun. And look at you know, we're we're talking about all the stuff that I loved as a as a kid. You know, look at you know That's... here. Look, you take a comic like this, these planet comics, man, these are fantastic. You know, where you're mixing the monster yep. with the girl with the space stuff. And, and you know, you just invent and play and have fun. And this I remember vividly. Tom Corbett Space Cadet, yeah. which I have my own. I'll, I'll, I'll be painting my Tom Corbett Space Cadet ray gun at some point. This was a TV show. And look at the comics. Look at the nice painted covers. Everybody thinks painted covers are new, you know. Yep. So, you know, th there's stuff that is my, yeah, ah, but like I, I was, you know, you have paint, this ancient medium of paint and brush and canvas or board meets modern technology. Now with the NFT thing that you, you know, that you're talking about. Yeah. It's like when worlds collide. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was going to I was going to ask that kind of question of have you given much thought to that concept? Uh, clearly you have though, that's the answer of taking these you know, these thoughts and passions that originated back, you know, like with the skeleton with, you know, the gooey eyeball, that's when the science fiction stuff's coming in yep. the 1950s and all of that stuff. Yep. Um, and but in a, I'm not, I'm struggling with my words here for a second, so please forgive me. Well, here we are in this white space. Sort of like, yeah. you no, know, you, you, you advance into this white space where there's no information, so you're, it's, it's all new. Yeah. You know, but you, yeah, you've, you're taking it and real world putting those concepts into the future. Right. Uh, does that does that make sense? Well, yeah, like, oh, absolutely. You know, Look at I mean that whole idea. Sci-fi movies and things like that, but you're now. Like to me, I look. I mean, I'm just throwing stuff out as it hits me, you know, in in thoughts that I have. It's like, yeah, the ancient medium meets the present day meets the future. It's like, I got a great great quote. We used to do quotes, and here's a great one. Albert Einstein said the distinction between past present and future is only only a stubbornly persistent illusion <laughs> you know it's it's like i i've come to think that past present future are like a, a tapestry you know i'm sure that that's not an original thought coming out of me but it's like that vision of it you know there's not a past that's separate from the present that's separate from the future Everything is intertwined, yeah. interlaced, and interconnected. You know, it's, okay. it's a whole. Yep. And for whatever that means. <laughs> time, yeah. time, past, present, future, right? Uh, yeah, it's, I, and I, I totally, 
I get where you're coming from, where you're saying I'm not articulating myself very well today and, hey, don't. and, <laughs> and grasping it, but, but I, I get it. And I get how, I think it's a fascinating uh, approach from an artistic mind, you know, that yes. Okay. You're, people are making NFTs. NFTs are the hot new way uh, to sell art. It's trackable and things like that. But, you're, you're you're incorporating the the psychology of a retrospective or a a look into the past an introspective i should say which mm-hmm. this series is very much an introspection right but and then marrying that with um an absolute you know reality and again i'm i, I apologize for stumbling all over my words on this. Well, we're just uh, trying to get it right. That's what we're trying to do. So, I mean, yeah, but that's never it's, it's thing. a very fascinating way that you're incorporating that into the actual work. It's not sort of, I mean, I've seen a couple guys do it from the, the, in the NFT world, but it's in a very obvious way, right? Like, Oh, there's a big picture of the Bitcoin symbol or, you know, it's the Bitcoin this, or it's the uh, Ethereum this. And I get that. Um, but you know, you're approaching it in a in a little bit of a deeper meaning. It's not right there on the surface. It's peeling back the onion layers, uh, you know, as it were. Yeah, I mean, look at. I mean, I'm painting pictures. Uh, I'm I'm inventing stuff. Whether it's a bit, whether it's a NFT or whether it's paint on a canvas or on a board or or it's film. I've done film. I've done animation. I've done live action. It's all it's all one thing to me. You know, uh, any way it gets out there is that's the way it, that's the way it gets. That's the way it, that's what happens. You know, and this is the whole just uh, I mean, I you guys grasp it much more than I do because, you know, I don't really work a computer. You know, I mean, I, I, I do. I, the most I know is how to get my reference, you know, and uh, on Google, basically. And that's that's all I need to know. <laughs> and well, it's, it's it's a tool. You only need the tool. Yeah. Yeah. what you're going to use the tool for right and you know so it's it's a it's a new thing and new things are are constant and valuing is 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 a valuing things whatever that may be art or whatever is a constantly fluctuating conversation yeah it, it, it changes and shifts and grows and develops and there's all these offshoots and everything so this is just another Another. And, you know, one of, the, one of the things that is is fascinating to me, uh, you know, about these NFTs and the NFT market uh, is that it will allow you and, you know, your heirs in the future to uh, keep a tiny piece of of the work, even after it's sold, you know, like That's you know, the I whole understand. point of the, the whole point of this blockchain technology you know, is that it's trackable, it's traceable, and that if, you know, you sell it to someone and then they sell it to someone else, that percentage comes back to the artist, right? Which, you know, to my understanding that these things should only really be minted by the person who yeah. who's created them, uh, not by someone else that has bought the piece of art. That's n- not the way this is supposed to go. And technically, you're not allowed to do that. But um It'll allow you to maintain even a small fraction of, of that work that will benefit, you know, you and your family. Right. Uh, Which is, I mean, an know, effort that various people have uh, 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 worked at in the past. I know Vinny D. Fate, great artist, and I, mean, I, I haven't seen Vinny for many years, but a uh, sci-fi artist, and he worked, he was working towards that whole cause of, of, of part participation in resale for the artist you know mm-hmm. and at that conversation i was aware of that you know turned 20 30 40 years ago and whether or not it was you know and how to go about that now here i see that this is a possibility and it's fair you yeah. know i mean an artist does a work and he gets paid a 100 bucks for it in 2000 or whatever he gets paid for it or she gets paid for it and then it they're, they're they they suddenly become recognized and somebody the one who owned that picture now that paid two thousand for it tells it for two hundred thousand and keeps all the money 
you know, Ooh. and like there, you know, yeah. where's the ethical, where's, where the, what's the ethics of that? Yes. Where's the and, fairness? You know, even, you know, like, I think, you know, most people could, you know, they know, most people know the story of Van Gogh. Yeah. You know, he sold like, whether this is true or it's, you know, the apocryphal. Yeah. He, one painting, you know, for 40 bucks. Lifetime, Equivalent of 40 brother. bucks. Yep. And his brother now, sold it, you know, right? Yeah. He, now his stuff is, is priceless, ah. right? Where if this kind of technology existed at that time and they could have assigned NFTs to his work, his family, his future generations right. would have benefited from this. And even if you start looking to the, at the, the modern auction houses, um, I believe Hockney was one of the had one of the highest selling auctions of all time. Really, I believe it was through, I believe it was through Christie's. Um, and they sold you know his work for millions, a painting of his for millions, and and he got nothing from it, like absolutely nothing. <laughs> this is it's criminal. It it, it is. Not, it's criminal and, for for God's sakes. It's 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 like. The, the, the law may not state that, but, you know, the bigger law states that. <laughs> the yeah. bigger law, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's criminal. It's, it's, it, it, they say, well, that's business. That's, that's, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it, it only goes that way because the people who had um, the the upper hand in the situation have decided that it would go that way. Yes. You know, whether you're getting uh, a young artist who doesn't know their value and that person recognizes that there's something there or, you know, it's someone else that has invented something and, and someone else picked it up and, and ran with it. And, you know, we, we'll just, we can talk about like Superman or Batman you know, for, for that, those are prime oh. examples. Oh yeah, um, of of the creators making something for a company, uh, you know, which which they did. That's no no denying that. Right. And that those characters became extremely successful, <laughs> billion dollar empires. Uh, well, Superman, especially. Like, come on, we all know that. Everybody yeah. knows that story. That's yeah. that's the. And, uh, and unfortunately, it took a lawsuit from the family to get, you know, DC to to acknowledge and do the right thing. Right. You know, and right. That's, that's that's unfortunate that mm -hmm. that the way our society functions is we can't look at anything in the rearview mirror and say, you know, this person really helped us out. Our company wouldn't exist without their work exactly you know our entire company is built upon their work yes we should we should include them in uh you know into into reaping of the rewards you know and i remember joe simon who was a friend of uh, for the last 14 years of his life he co-creator of captain america mm -hmm. told me that you know he was working out where the hell he was what office in manhattan he was in and, and there's a guy came in with a beat up old overcoat with a package, a delivery guy. And he looks up and it's uh, Joe Schuster. Can you imagine that this guy creates Superman along with his partner, Jerry Siegel. And he ends up as a delivery guy around Manhattan, sleeping on park benches every once in a while. And, he, and before he died, he had to sell his own personal collection of his own books in order to pay his rent. You know, it, it, that's one of the most disastrous of all stories in terms of it is it's it is it's it's a tragedy. Yeah. And, you know, it's. Yeah, it, it, it shouldn't have to work that way. It doesn't have to work that way. As I should, let me correct myself. It doesn't have to work that way. It should never have worked that way. Right. And hopefully. Hopefully, the guys that have invented this technology, this blockchain technology, right. that can tie it back to the artist and automatically generates it, 
no matter what someone else sells it for, there's no hiding it. Right. You can't hide it. It's going to be out there. And a percentage of that will always kick back to the artist. And that, yeah. that is a phenomenal thing. I mean, look at, I mean, I, I'm no uh, uh, expert on history. You know, I've got a high school education uh, and, and six months of art school. I read a lot, but the history of the human race is pretty much like that, man. Oh, granted, it's got its good side, too. But look at it. Look at the flow of history. We, I, I used to imagine, possibly, that artists at a different time in history had a better life. Well, not so. At Rembrandt's time, you imagine, oh, Rembrandt, oh, my God, the, the Flemish painter. Yeah. Now, they all had a tent city outside Amsterdam. That's where they all lived. I mean, literally, like a slum outside outside Amsterdam. Yeah. Now, there, it, it's always like... the Because we don't think... we not me and I... If it wasn't for Gene, 40 years ago, 50 years, when the hell we meet 40 years ago, I would have been on a cardboard box on the street. I really mean that. Because I, even though I had a career and I, I, I plotted it myself to the degree that I did, but I was very fortunate to have what things just kind of like keep happening for me, being in the right yeah. spot at the right time with the right stuff sort of like thing. And then when Gene entered the scene, because, I mean, I just threw away all my sketches and everything and the job, bring the job into the client and hand it to them and walk away and they send you a check and they keep the artwork even though the contract never the agreement you had never stated that they own the actual object they had yeah. they they were going to reproduce it that's where the rights were and i never thought about it and i think most most artists never thought about it you just kind of like went along with it in the times that i would ask various editors or publishers of smaller publishing houses even not the big ones per se but a couple i won't mention their names i'd ask for more money they'd say there's 50 people standing in the line. If you don't take the job, we'll give it to them, one of them. Boom! You know, just <laughs> shut up. And, you know, yeah. it's like they treated you like a piece of shit. Not every, but don't take me wrong. There were individuals who were like that. You know, art directors and all that stuff were always stuck in the middle. They worked for the company and they worked for the art with the artist and always had that sympathy towards the artist. And various, one well, of the best ones, not to mention names again, would say to me, ask for more money. They'd whisper in their <laughs> office to you because these are the guys knowing that, you know, they were, you know, and it's always been that way, you know, and it's time for a change. Yeah. <laughs> these are the yeah. times of change. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, and I mean, this is certainly not a, uh, uh, a woe is us conversation. I hope no one takes it that, no. that way. Uh, no, no, it's not. <laughs> you know, it's not that way at all. Uh, it, it is just of getting fair compensation oh. for your work. Everybody <laughs> wants fair compensation for their work. Simple right? as that. And the arts, per particularly in our culture, uh, whether it's film or through paintings or music, the 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 arts have have the power to generate a substantial amount of income right <laughs> you know those comic book characters from the marvel universe or the dc universe or whatever generate an enormous amount of revenue overwhelming right? and it, it it yeah it's it's unfair it's about imbalance i mean the people who play the parts now Right, make all the money. The, the people who created that part in the book form, in the writing, in the word form, they're off. You know, some of them, you know, the older ones are off starving somewhere. You know. Yeah. It, it, and... it, it's really an imbalance. Koyana Scotsi, yeah. Life Out of Balance. You know, that's another yep. movie to see. Okay. You know, uh, the thing I was going to say before I, I wanted to clarify that we're not in a woe is us conversation but i do think that maybe at a time that it was really good for someone to be an artisan may have been in those native uh cultures you know the native america cultures yeah. or the central america of where you know or you know even in the samaritan cultures things like that the people that were telling the history were the artists or the people that were making those costumes and going out and doing the ceremonial dances and yes. tribes and telling the stories. Yeah. Yes. I have a feeling Keeping they were the probably hit. held in pretty high regard. Yeah. In, in those kinds of cultures. Yeah. You know? Well, the artist, what is the artist today? 
what would you say, in this culture that we inhabit? It's, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, what are we? Yeah. You know, when you mention, when you watch politicians there and, and, and everybody, they'll, they'll list all these categories of, well, we're out there for the working man, we're out there for the minor, and we're out there for the laborer, and we're out for the auto worker, and we're out there for the doctors, and we're out there for the lawyers, and we're out there for the housewives. They never mention artists. You understand? I, 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 they never I, mention that as a real sort of like that we're members of that whole working world thing, you know? Well, a part of the society. And it's it's interesting to me that uh you know the the starving artist kind of still is that the the in the prevalence and um I don't want to go down or maybe I just don't want to mention his name, but the last administration kind of had that view of the arts and that they were pointless or worthless or you know oh, all, all, all communists all communists are left wing or all, yeah. yeah right and mm -hmm. that binary thinking you know yeah and it gets it gets they they shove it into a weird category of but they don't consider of all of like you know the people that are doing all the commercial aspects of the art the you know, the package designers, the graphic right. designers, the, yeah. the people that do the typography and right. the layouts, and, yep. you know, all the, the photo retouching and all the, all of that stuff too, where that might not get to perform at the Lincoln center, right. you know, exactly. <laughs> you know, it might, you know, might not get to perform for, uh, you know, the congressmen and the senators mm -hmm. and, and, and all those people, you might not be in Carnegie hall. Right. But you're working in the arts right every you are. single you're day every day nobody looks at that as art though and of course the other aspect that i grew up with too is you all you artists you're all a bunch of perverts you know you have wild pies <laughs> and you draw all on drugs and you're all you know they you're grab ass you know it, it, you know those are the politicians those are the clerics these days not not all not all not all but the artists you're always bad you you have that category over there they're the, they're the uh, you know it's interesting because I, I don't know that I've ever met. I've met artists that liked their drink, right? For sure. Sure, oh, of course. But but they all are pretty uh, introverted. Introverted <laughs> and straight. A, introverted and focused. You got to be to yeah. do this. You can't until, until you get into your, like your little crowd of people where you can come out of your shell. Yeah, but for the right. for the most part, they like they live like Absolutely. little hermit lives and things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. That, not There's these no debauchery uh, going on. Yeah, but that was always the image, you know. <laughs> I've never seen a great illustration like that. The artist, the artist, like it was one of these cheesy illustrations. Now, I, I love that cheesy illustration stuff from those men's magazines from like 1965 and so. And they're all they are you grabbing the model and you're all slugging booze and <laughs> you know that's what people. Ima I remember when I used to had life class when I did my six month of art school and I go to the. I was working my way through school and going through this paper packing company and wrapping boxes and, you know, getting on uh, runs with the truckers and stuff. And they always say, yeah, yeah, we, the girls are your models. You know, they, they never looked at it like I'd say I'm pragmatic. I went to a class and I'm drawing the figure. The, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like all that kind of crap, you know, the imagination that they had about what we were like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. In, in a figure drawing class, it is not like that at all. No, no, no. Far from it. You know, it is, it is not no. like that at all. It's very academic. Very academic. You know, extremely. I've never been in a figure drawing class of where uh, there were inappropriate things going no. on or being said no. or, no. or anything like that. It's academic. It's very straightforward. Um, to, to, to tie all this back around to the, you know, these, the NFTs and the other aspect, you know, we, we were talking about it from an, an artist perspective of, of making it and, and getting, having a way to kind of, uh, you know, reap the benefit of your hard work throughout the work's lifespan. But, you know, the other aspect of it, that's pretty interesting to me. I don't know how much you've heard about this aspect or how much you've been involved in it or not, but is the, the way people are looking, this is a new way of investing for people. Yeah. You know, they're yeah, buying I this from, art. 
I hear the conversations that you and Gene have and, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And you're buying more than just a piece of art, you know, these that right now the NFTs for the, for the most part, I think they're going to mint them on a different blockchain soon. But right now they're on what's called the Ethereum blockchain, right? And okay. You pay for it in Ether. And it's, you know, it's cryptocurrency. It's just another form of cryptocurrency. But it, from, from my perspective, it's, you know, like, okay, I want to get into the crypto market on somehow, but, you know, I'm kind of wary about it a little bit. You know, it's like uh, dipping your toe to kind of get your feet wet. The, the NFT aspect of it is a, is a little bit more interesting to me rather than just buying uh you know, Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin's mm -hmm. a, in that, in that if I buy an NFT, I still get something for the money I spent. If it goes up in value and I can resell it. Cool. That's like a regular stock. I get it. Right. It's like mm -hmm. stock market. I could sell yeah. it, but if it, if it never goes up in value or, you know, or I guess it could even decrease in value. I still own that art that I bought. Yeah. And, you know, and if I'm buying something that I like and that I enjoy, or if I'm buying something from an artist that I support, regardless of the, the financial value of it, I still own it. Yep. You know, true for like, another, all the other art forms, too, right? If you own the yeah. actual painting or sculpting or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, that, that's, that's what makes the, from, the non arts from the purchaser side of the NFT. Very interesting is that, you know, if I buy Bitcoin and Bitcoin tanks, it's gone. Mm -hmm. I have nothing to show for it. But if I buy an NFT, I'm actually buying something, you know, I could display it. I can show yeah. it off. And then if I want to sell it later, I could totally sell it later. So Keith, Gene. have you guys uh, been, have you mentioned that the NFT drop on Tuesday with Maker's Place? We have not mentioned that yet, but we will mention that right now. Okay. So, but one of the reasons I was just, I was just on uh, working on some the of the, no, uh, working on some of the PR on this, but uh, one of the things that uh, I just learned, which I did not realize is that with makers, unlike the others, where the others, you, you have to, if you're going to purchase an NFT, uh, you, you have to use crypto. Okay. okay, so you, you know, you've got to get a wallet, you got to do the whole nine yards and, and get yourself all set up with cryptocurrency. But with makers, you can actually use your credit card. So you can use your Visa, your MasterCard, or your American Express, or your Discover. You don't have to be a crypto person. So if you're interested in, you know, getting your feet wet, that's kind of like an interesting way of doing it. So you, you know, you end up with something that, you know, deals with this but you don't have to go through all the you know the beginnings of figuring out crypto bitcoin blockchain yada 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 all that stuff oh that's okay. cool yeah so that's I, just, very cool. I, I would mention that i'm still answering the people who are chatting okay awesome <laughs> so hey, hey gene before you go what time yeah. do you know what time the drop on tuesday is the time i don't have the drop time yet it's uh maker's place is the is the site and it's supposed to be featured now they've been having a few glitches there was a drop uh, for amanda connor yesterday that did not go the way it was supposed to and they had some some trouble even finding amanda which was a problem because she was a featured artist on there um this is a greg's supposed to be a featured drop on tuesday a featured artist drop uh I'm going to bet it's probably going to be like maybe two, three in the afternoon, somewhere around there, because we have that chat at two o'clock scheduled. So I, oh, I think okay. that's like an hour before the drop. So I'm going to say probably around three o'clock. Three o'clock. It'd be Eastern. a lot of fun just to go watch. You know, you don't, you don't have to buy. It but. will be cool. And I, uh, as, as Spiderweb Art, we're going to be doing uh, what a, are we going to be doing a Discord discussion? We're going to be doing Discord, and we're going to be doing that other one, too. And Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> all right. So, yeah, everyone, if pay attention to all of our social channels, because we're going to be announcing more stuff over the weekend as we get the details uh, about this drop on Tuesday. Uh, 
you know, so there will be emails coming out, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook posts galore, I'm sure, uh, just as reminders. But if anybody wants to get on Discord, right, it's something that's going to be completely new for us. Um, but it's yeah, we're going to set up what it a looks chat. Like to me is an old school chat room, right? That's what it looks like. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> so old school. We're gonna old school. We're gonna be on there talking about the drop talking about the puppets so if anybody from watches the live stream wants to drop in and join in on the discussion and ask questions uh please do so and, okay oh greg well i had one i had one more question for you we got a couple minutes because we, we started late we can go for a couple minutes or not okay it's up to you keith yeah yeah i'm good i i had one question this was something that's kind of like burning in in my mind of mm -hmm. You know, because yeah, I know you're moving into the NFT space and selling your art in 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 that way, but you know, you and I had always talked about how you want to make sure that your art, that you're making art that's available to the to the average fan. Yes, right. That was that was, that's been an effort that Gene <clears throat> has always had, and I've always had too, in a sense. That that you know it's it's available for it, not just now, is, is, millionaires. That, is that something that you know? Because you know, my, not everybody's going to want to jump in into the the NFT market, or even if they do, I'm I'm going to assume right now that some of your NFTs are going to be high or they're probably high end, right? You know, as they should be, but. Do you know if there are any plans to do some uh, additions, like you know, larger edition NFTs that maybe someone could pick up for, you know, not as high as prices as the regular? I believe so. Yeah, Gene knows that. So She's I can actually <clears throat> that for you because I was just having a conversation with them about this. So the the three puppets that the NFT is is uh, you know on Tuesday that drop those are one of ones. Okay, that NFT. But we are going to be making additions of those three puppets. We haven't figured out the addition size or the pricing yet, but I'm going to try and keep the pricing somewhere between two and three hundred dollars, so that just about anybody that you know wants to play in this game can you know can get an NFT for that price, and and that's awesome. a fair price because even if you're buying a Gicle, you know Gicle is yes. three hundred to five hundred dollars, so. You know, yep. this is great. Yeah, that's very cool. And and I'm, I'm assuming as well, as I'm going to make an assumption <clears throat> that, you know, with these puppets and, you know, like that guy back there, I would like to own him when he's done. <laughs> but I'm not going to buy an NFT. Well, maybe your, I will buy an NFT. Your roosters are chiming in. They want to buy some MST. <laughs> yes. Yes, Keith. Are you selling? Are you going to sell prints of that guy? Because I want to buy a print of that. Yes. Guy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because you like you like the you like the leaky bulging eyeball. Uh, I do. I, yeah, I, I do. think. Oh, good God. Uh, yeah, I, I think that that, that adds, that's a... lovely. So, uh, as with almost every well, no, as with everything that we own the copyright on, that, that is Greg's copyright. Um, we try and make everything available uh -huh. in prints in three different ways. We have your basic eight and a half, eleven, you know, quality photo print that we print here that Greg signs for fifteen dollars, which is a mm -hmm. good price. Then we have a thirteen by nineteen high quality photo print that we make here. They're absolutely gorgeous on luster paper that Greg signs for thirty five dollars. And then we have giclées. Now, not everything is going to be a giclé on canvas, but some uh, some of the stuff we have quite a few pieces that are on giclées. 11 by 17s that are on sale right now for $150 and the 17 by 25s, which are on sale for 300. So I, I like low end to high end in art. I believe that everyone should be able to afford good art always. It's always been my goal, 41 years. I concur. <laughs> and, and yeah, I could, you know, I can definitely see that about the two of you and that you've, you have a, a such a wide, wide range of stuff that you make available, you know, 
and, and it's cool and it's cool you know when you seeing you guys at shows you know dealing with people talking to people and and stuff like that it's pretty cool but that, that's why we we do right we're in the so-called pop culture realm that's art for the people you know that's coming out of you know everyday experiences and what people experience well i don't know too many people who have a human skeleton in their office well you know i mean they, they bought it in the comic books i mean you know it's like it's everybody, all available in this everybody pop- has a skeleton in their office when they're in it okay that's, that's there you go true, Keith. and in their closet and in their closet when they're in <coughs> yes. that's true Keith. but not ichabod not mine He's been, stand, he's been standing at my, my desk with a fedora on his head since 1980. 80, 1980. We, bought it, we bought it to a new yeah, poster. 1980. Right? Got him from the Carolina think, Biological Society. I think there was a and, skeleton uh, in the Merlin calendar, too. The there was Mar- a skeleton Mary Stewart's in the Merlin, Merlin. Calendar, but actually bought him for a hidden image poster painting job that Greg got in 1980 that I got him with Verkirka in Holland. They were the largest poster company in the world at the time and he wanted a skeleton so i bought one it's a it i've used it many times right <laughs> on over the years yeah. for various in the in the good old days keith when skeletons weren't worth a fortune which they are today um uh, i used to when i was single i used to put him in the passenger seat of my uh sports car and he had a fedora on i stick a cigarette in his mouth and i put this the shoulder harness on him and I would drive him around town on Mischief Night for like three hours in, in Summit, where I live, and the kids would go crazy. <laughs> they just loved having this skeleton driving around town. It's, it's You know what's weird? is the fact that people yeah, think me. it's weird. No, no. The fact that people think that this is weird when it's inside of all of us. Yeah, right. It's part of who yeah. we are. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yes. And, that, and that's weird. The yeah. fact that people think it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's very weird that when you think about what you really are is you're a self-aware gelatinous organ <laughs> that is encased in bone armor. Yeah. And yeah. is it yeah. It's wild, it's right? It's crazy. When it's that thought goes clunk, you go like, whoa. Yeah, it's crazy. And you know, and we're all individuals. Like snowflakes are all individuals and leaves are all individuals. There ain't one of us. And the, the, when you stop and think about this and this, that the meat and the skin and everything gets applied to it, that it's fractions of an inch of measurement that make us all look different. It isn't like it's a foot difference or a half an inch difference. Even. A nose, eyes, head. It's only this much that creates a completely different look. And now multiply that, how many billions yeah, of time yeah. over the last 100, 100 million years wow. that everyone is completely different. That's mind-blowing. i got a question for you, Greg. Right? So the brain became self-aware enough to name itself. I think. Therefore, I am. I think. Did the first brain that became aware enough to name itself get it right? <laughs> I don't know if you, you know. I'm going to go over and, and look at my other computer and see if there's any questions you should see. If people are asking questions, yeah. but no, I mean just really, really yeah. It, that that whole thing, you, I, it always blows my mind. You go outside, you look at the grass or the leaves. That every freaking one of them is completely unique. That's yeah. almost impossible. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, how is how is it possible? Grains of sand are completely different from each other, and there's yeah. trillions and trillions and trillions of them. Yes, and you it, think it, then the the amount of planets that are in the galaxy are more than the grains of sand. It's, you know, yeah. Yeah. Infinitely big and infinitely small. Yeah. Everything goes right. I love it. Just dwelling on that kind of stuff is. You know, you know, it takes you out of that. You think you're the center of the universe concept, an idea that we all have about ourselves, that it all began and ended with us. Somehow we are yeah. everything, you know, we're and, the and center, in some way we are, we are, we are everything. And yet, you know, we're part of everything. I mean, here's the, yeah. here's the great quote. Here's another quote while we're talking about along these lines. 
All things are connected like the blood which unites one family. Whatever befalls the earth befalls the sons of earth. Man did not weave the web of life. He is merely a strand of it. Whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. Chief Seattle. That's a Damn. beautiful quote. I love that. That is a beautiful quote. You know? That is a beautiful quote. It, it, everything is all... Native culture, right, believed that everything is connected by... You know, we're all there's all that interconnection that yes. we lost, or we if we ever had it, I don't know. You know, yeah, it, it, it's, it, yeah. You're not a you're not above the ecosystem. You're not at the top of the ecosystem. You're just a part of part of it. A part of it. Yes. And that realization is something to. I mean, if we had that, if most of us had that, it would be a different world. And. I, I saw, uh, I don't know who the quote was by or who said it. Uh, I'm sure that I saw it on, on Facebook, but I, I, I really liked it. And in, in this conversation, obviously, you know, we're both in full agreement that there's nothing wrong with money. There's also nothing wrong with working for money and earning money. Right. You know, uh, you and I and Gene, I know we're all capitalists in this. And that. Absolutely. Let's see. <laughs> We, we work pragmatic hard. reality, you know, but the so with that caveat, seeing someone say that what we are willing to do to our environment, right, to pollute it so bad, to pollute our drinking water, to pollute our oh, air, everything for green pieces of paper. Yep. That yep. we could go buy other stuff with. Yeah, what we're willing to do for that paper—it's—it's—it's it's it's an insanity, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's a madness. It's—it's it's a illness. <laughs> it's really—it's—it's yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, when? When is an, when is enough enough? Mm -hmm. You know, right. how, like when do we have enough? Uh, and, I don't know, man. It's—it's it's like, but. That sense that you know the, I think the distinction of of, of, of our present, our, our who we are and what we are, is completely lost. You know, it's it's like that idea that you know we in some way are alone, and we have no connection to the past or the future. You know, and that that the lack of that realization is all part and parcel of what the problem is. You know, yes, like that we have no connection to anything, past or present. People say stuff about the past. Oh, don't talk about that to me. That that's over with. That, you know, you know, that's over with. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Yeah. It's like, wh when do you stop talking about the past? A year ago, ten years ago, a thousand years ago, twenty thousand years ago? What, why? Why is it that at some point you don't think about these things or the future? You know? Yeah. It, it, we can go on and on. We stop, you know, we stop the conversation when it becomes a little too uncomfortable. And here, by talking about the future, here, this great story in Weird Science Fantasy, EC Comics. Look at that beautiful picture by Al Williamson. Do you remember this? This These guys time travel, and they're warned to stay on the path of this, the guy that's designed this time travel device. And they go back to this age of the, you know, the Tyrannosaurus. And one guy jumps off the, the path and steps on a moth. And when they return to the future, everything has changed. It's really one of the best stories ever, man. <laughs> I think they made a movie about it some time ago. Not quite to the level of this book, though, I don't think. Yeah. That, what, I read this as a kid. You know, it is what, EC. What comic is that? What EC. Is that? Weird, weird Science Fantasy. This okay. is an EC comic. I remember Tim and I, we went nuts for these once we realized that landed on the in the local soda shop, and we would buy them, all of them. You know, they're weird science, weird, it, it, weird fantasy, weird science fantasy. And Strange then suddenly tales. they were gone. We, we went to the store to pick up our monthly issues. There weren't any. And I was a kid. I didn't know what the hell politics or the crap that was going on. That's when that whole witch hunt period started. When Wortham, that shrink, writes this book, Seduction of the Innocents. And, and you know, it's all the, suddenly all this disappears. Gone. In an instant. Gone. And they, the stories are Ray Bradbury. I mean, Arthur Clarke. And the artists, oh, Frank Rosetta. I, the best artists, some ever. of the best artists that have ever worked ever. in the industry. Ever. <laughs> Gone. 
gone. You know, and that book almost destroyed the whole comic industry, right? Then the code came out. This has been certified, stamped, U.S. grade A inspected beef, you know? The Comics Code Authority. <laughs> yep. This is morally correct. Who's that panel? No. That bunch of wasps, excuse me, wasps out there, you know, sitting there. <laughs> What oh. what year was that? What year was that? This book? Let me read it again. It's a, it's... Or when that when that code came out? To... Oh, uh, when the hell? Somebody out there knows for sure. Uh, I forgot what the year was. Well, these are this is fifty four. So it had to have been. I know. Well, they had the comic book burning started in fifty five. Comic book burnings, right? You ever see those photos? The kids all smilingly throwing your books up in a pile, and it looks like freaking Nazi Germany. <laughs> Again, we've had this conversation before that this was the cause of crime and juvenile delinquency, not the parents incorrectly raising their kids or paying attention to them. This now, was you also got to think of everything else that was going on in the world in the 1950s. Blame the artists. Blame the artists. Blame the artists, man. You know those artists. You know the how they are. They're all commies and perverts. Blame the artists. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, yeah, man. In a way, it's it, it's funny in in retrospective. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's a Mel Brooks. It's, it's like a Mel Brooks movie. It's like the history of the world, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's really kind of crazy when you. Look at back and saying, "Wow, that actually, that actually happened." Well, what's going on now? I mean, it's all the same kind of crap in a way, you know. Yeah. So you land on something over there and you put your blame on that. There's, it's either a race or a religion or an ethnic group, you know, there, or there, or the artist or the artwork or what the hell ever, music or, you know, you know, there, there, yeah, there's, okay. there's, there's, there's the problem. You use the term the the. There's always going to be the enemy at the gates. Yeah. It's... And the best way to ensure that you're not considered the enemy at the gate is to point the finger and yell really loud. Absolutely. Tell, tell a lie <laughs> over and over and over. Hitler's playbook, right? Yep. Goebbels' playbook for the propaganda. Repeat the lie. Repeat it big and, re and re make a big lie. Tell it over and over and over again. Then it becomes real. You know? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny and it's like it ain't so funny. It's funny and it ain't so funny and I I find it to wrap it all back around to what you're doing, man. Again, I find it fascinating that you're putting all of that stuff into these paintings, yeah. you know, that are behind like that one behind you. Like all that stuff that we talk about. Yeah. That's what these paintings are about. It's, you know, you know all that subconsciously comes out. Yep. It's all there buried. All and you start to work with the pencil and the brush and all this stuff starts to emerge. Yep. And uh, what, what color is that eye going to be? Uh, well, it'll be, I don't know yet, but it's going to be lit top. You know, you'll see the blue light hitting it here. So you get that shiny wet blue and you got the warm light it'll be it won't be you know the, the bone is is more yellowy the older bone you know so it won't be yep. quite as orangey as this it, it, it'll be a little less it'll probably be more raw sienna raw sienna i think with white in it and coming towards slightly orange and yellow in it probably base raw sienna with the shadow color that i use on this is purple it's actually a Doxazine purple and, and and Mars black mixture okay. you, that I've chosen to use here. So it is. But it's a, a natural color eyeball, like a yeah. natural white. Yeah. Okay. And some of the, as in my reference here, or the however it is, you know, I think I have some of that flesh, you know, here inside. You know what I'm saying? Pinky, kind of like yeah. warm skin, you know, meat color you know and what color the actual eye you know cornea and stuff will be i don't know yet yeah i'll decide that i was looking at it i, I didn't know like, i didn't know if you're going to make it like a fluorescent green or maybe, like, maybe. i don't know i'm gonna i think i'm gonna paint go this. anywhere 
Yeah, I could go anywhere. I'm going to get this all in here. I'm going to paint everything first before I go to that. That'll be the last thing I paint. I want to see. I do you know, love the fact. Sorry, this is called the Cosmic Outlaw, right? No, the the uh, Space Outlaw. Space, space Outlaw, not the Cosmic yeah, Outlaw. Yeah, it's got it. It lets you know it because it's. It's written on the gun handle. You see it there? Yeah. Yep. Look at look at the there's, look at the, look at the rocket in the they little. They put a lot of detail into that handle. What? They put a lot of detail into that. Oh handle. yeah, it's like, it's really very Art Nouveau-ish. This shape here, especially, right? Yeah. There's like the rocket ships and the planets. Yeah. It's a cap gun. Look at it moves. Awesome. But the, I. It's not lost on me that the space outlaw is a human. Right. <laughs> it's not there you lost. go. Not lost on me. There you go. Space outlaw is a human. Yep. Kind of jack everything up now. <laughs> all, all right, Mr. Hildebrandt. It is 15 after five. This was a great conversation. I enjoyed the hell out of this one. Yeah, me too, man. And I'm going to finish off American Holocaust. And anybody that's uh, still listening or, you know, watching, uh, I don't know how many of you actually, I know at least one person other than me uh, read the book. <clears throat> I, I highly encourage, <clears throat> I highly encourage everyone to read that book. However, I will say this, if you are uncomfortable with your thoughts and beliefs being challenged. Don't read it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting yeah. way of putting well, it. Well, yeah. It's, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but uh, I, th those are the kind of books that we, 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 I don't know, like should is the should's not the word. Not sure. no, yeah. We should not should sure. on ourselves. No, you just but, look at things differently. Yeah. You look at different perspectives. You, I, I recommend you analyze, it. you figure out other people's mm -hmm. points of view and, and why yeah. they have them. And then actually you maybe can come to a conclusion that's other than right. what you thought before. That's all. It's yeah. when worlds it's collide. We when worlds collide. That's how we learn. So anyhow. Okay, Keith, I came over to sign you off. And say good night all right. to everyone. Oh, wait a minute. Are you going to talk about the web, uh, the, yeah. the story web art and all that stuff? Yeah. Okay, so anybody that's interested in Greg's art, purchasing any of Greg's art, purchasing any of Greg's books, prints, uh, anything like that, go to spiderwebart.com. You see it in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. If you're liking what we're doing, please hit the like button, the subscribe button. Please leave comments uh, everywhere. Tell your friends about it. If you got any suggestions, uh, comments, constructive criticisms, hey, please send them on. We love to hear them uh again next tuesday nft drop big nft drop with uh greg's kid stuff series really really looking forward to that pay attention to all of our social channels we'll give everybody uh more information about where we're going to be and when for that drop and uh marvel books we still have a few left available in signing with signed or with remarked again you can find those on the website and two more things you've got a star wars themed gallery show coming up in june in dallas texas uh we just put the art on the website we i posted one picture to instagram today um so that's pretty cool so everybody keep paying attention for that coming up star wars themed stuff coming from greg and uh Another big auction coming up. We don't have the definitive. Oh, wait. We do have the definitive dates. Uh, June 29th, 30th, and July 1st. There's going to be some cool Tolkien sketches and some other uh, stuff of yours, Shadows of the Empire stuff, going up for auction at the Prop Store Auction in L.A. And you can find that stuff on our website. Again, we'll be sending out more information about this in the very, very near future. So thanks everybody for tuning in and I'm gonna sign off and now you can say your goodbyes to Greg. Thanks folks. Okay. Sorry we didn't have the uh, interconnection here with uh, conversation, so, but we will next week, I'm sure. I'm just gonna throw this out because I know some of you were waiting actually for Greg to paint, which is what Greg is supposed to be doing. 
and he talks and he talks. We didn't paint and much he today. Talks. So I promise you that next I week, will be painting. He will be painting. I will be hanging over him with the proverbial whip that everybody says that I wield all the time. No, here's the here's the picture that I constantly keep up of Jean. She mm. posed for me once for, <laughs> for a magic card, and I keep that over my head just to remind me. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyhow. Thanks for coming, guys, and really enjoy having you. Enjoy doing this. And for those of you who think that I should chime in with interesting stories, we may get to that point. Well, I Thank think, you, I everyone. think we definitely should. Okay, good night, everyone. Good night, all. Thanks a lot, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Yep. Thank you, Greg.